Here I want to look at the notion of elementary functions versus non-elementary functions. And there are several different ways to define elementary functions, but what we will take as a definition is functions that can be written in terms of rational functions of x, roots of x, as well as logarithms and exponentials of those rational functions and roots. So notice if we're using exponentials, we're allowed to use trigonometric functions, and that's because sine and cosine have exponential representations. And in fact, what we want to show is that the antiderivative of e to the x squared is not one of these elementary functions. So this is generally something that you learn about in a calculus 2 or an integral calculus type class, but you don't really prove it. And we're not going to prove it from scratch here. We're going to use a fairly powerful theorem to prove this fact, but we will provide some evidence to this fact that is more than just saying, hey, this is a non-elementary function. Maybe before we look at this theorem, I want to point out there are some other common non-elementary functions. Some other functions related to this antiderivative of e to the x squared would be like the antiderivative of sine of x squared, or maybe the antiderivative of cosine of x squared. We have some others like the antiderivative of 1 over natural log or the antiderivative of 1 minus x cubed. Those are all non-elementary functions. In other words, those antiderivatives cannot be written in terms of commonly known functions like we described earlier. Okay, so now let's look at this theorem which will help us prove that the antiderivative of e to the x squared is non-elementary. So let's suppose that f of x and g of x are rational functions. So by rational functions, I mean ratios of polynomials. Then the function f of x times e to the g of x can be integrated in terms of elementary functions if and only if there is a rational function, which I'll call r of x, satisfying the following first order linear differential equation. We have r prime plus g prime r of x equals f of x. Okay, so like I said, this is a fairly powerful result. That would take a lot of work to prove from scratch, but we will use this result in order to prove that the antiderivative of e to the x squared is not elementary. Okay, so let's get to it. So to apply this theorem, we'll take f of x equal to the constant function 1, and then we'll take g of x equal to the polynomial function x squared. So that means our r of x, which is a rational function, must satisfy the following first order linear differential equation. So that'll be r prime of x plus, so g prime, that'll be 2x times r of x equals f of x, but that's just one here. Okay, so we've got a nice, fairly simple first order linear differential equation that our rational function r of x must satisfy. Okay, before we move any further, I want to make the following observation about r of x. Well, we know from this, r of x is a rational function, in other words, a ratio of polynomials. So maybe r of x could be a polynomial in the first place, but in fact, that is not possible. So r of x is not a polynomial. Okay, well, let's maybe do a quick proof of that. And we'll prove that by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that r of x equals a naught all the way up to a n x to the n. So that would be a standard form of a polynomial. But now we can plug this into our differential equation, which must be satisfied by r of x and get a1 plus 2a2 times x plus all the way up to n times a n times x to the n minus 1. That's the derivative of r plus 2a naught x plus 2a1 x squared plus all the way up to, let's see, 2 a n x to the n plus 1 equals 1. But now the right hand side of this equation is a constant, whereas the only constant term on the left hand side is a 1. 
So what that tells us is that A1 is equal to one, whereas AM is equal to zero for all M not equal to one. Okay, but we're about to hit a problem. Let's throw this back into our original equation. Maybe not our original equation, but this equation up here and see what it cancels down to. We'll be left with one plus a bunch of zeros, and then we have plus two times one times x squared equals one, but that means that x squared equals zero. But this has to hold for all x, and so that is not true. You might say, well, that has a solution, x equals zero, but since this is a differential equation, this has to hold for all values of x, which clearly that does not happen. So in conclusion, r of x is not a polynomial. Okay, so let's maybe take that fact and move on. We just determined that our rational function, which satisfies the following first order linear differential equation, is in fact not a polynomial. So that means it's a quotient of two polynomials. But since it's a quotient of two polynomials where the denominator is non-constant, by the fundamental theorem of algebra, we know that the denominator has a root. So all of that works up to the following fact that we were able to write r of x as p of x over x minus alpha to the m, where alpha is some complex number, and also alpha is neither a zero or a pole of p of x. So what do I mean by a pole of p of x? Well here, p of x is a rational function, so it can be written as a of x over b of x. So if alpha is a zero, well then a of alpha is equal to zero, but if alpha is a pole, then b of alpha is equal to zero. So we can assume that it's neither a zero or a pole because we've done all of the appropriate cancellation. So now let's take this and throw it into our differential equation and see what we are left with. So we'll have p of x over x minus alpha to the m prime, so that's taking this derivative, plus 2x p of x over x minus alpha to the m equals one. Now let's take this derivative, we need to use the product rule here. That'll leave us with p prime of x over x minus alpha to the m, and then minus m times p of x over x minus alpha to the m plus one. There we have to use maybe the generalized power rule or the chain rule for this x minus alpha to the m in the denominator. And then finally plus two x p of x over x minus alpha to the m equals one. Now let's take this equation and clear the denominators. So we can clear the denominators by multiplying by x minus alpha to the m plus one. So what will that leave us with? That'll leave us with p prime of x times x minus alpha minus m times p of x plus 2x times p of x times x minus alpha equals x minus alpha to the m plus one. Okay, so we're almost about to hit a contradiction, but we're running out of room, so let's bring that up. On the last board, we arrived at the following equation. So we have p prime times x minus alpha equals m times p plus 2x p x minus alpha equals x minus alpha to the m plus one. Let's recall that alpha is neither a zero or a pole of p of x. So that means we're allowed to plug alpha into p of x and we will not achieve zero and we will not achieve infinity either. Now I'm going to use something without proof and that is if alpha is not a pole of p of x, in other words, it's not a zero of the denominator of p of x, then it's not a pole of p prime of x either. And that's pretty easy to check by taking the derivative of this form of p of x and noticing that we get a denominator of b of x squared. So if alpha is not a zero of b of x, then it won't be a zero of the square of b of x. Okay, so that's good to know. 
Okay, now where are we gonna go from here? So notice everything here has an X minus alpha term into, in it except for one term. That would be this one right here. So let's set X equal to alpha and see what happens. So we'll get a zero here minus M times P times alpha plus zero equals zero. Oh, but that tells us that P evaluated at alpha is zero, and that's a contradiction because our construction started with alpha not being a zero of P of X. So what have we contradicted? We contradicted the existence of a rational function satisfying the following differential equation. So in other words, no rational function satisfies this differential equation. And since no rational function satisfies this differential equation, we know the antiderivative of e to the x squared is not elementary from this powerful theorem. And that's a good place to stop.